Welcome to our webinar devoted to topic of preparing micro business, micro businesses for the digital future. At the beginning, I suggest let's warm up. Uh, I would like to suggest if you can share your name, position and country you come from to the chat while you hear from me on today's plan approximately uh, in a few minutes, I will introduce uh, the housekeeping rules. So let's use this time and uh, please put into chat uh, your name, position and country so we can see you know, how many different uh, participants from different countries do we have because we had uh, quite a large number of registered participants. So we are curious how many of you actually join us on today's session. As you can see, we plan our session for approximately 90 minutes. It will include short interactions with you in form of polls and also via chat. And we, we will also record the webinar so you can come back or recommend to your colleagues to view it later. In case of any questions, feel free to use the chat or raise your hand. There is an icon uh, at, the, at the dashboard that probably at the bottom of your screen or the top, depending on your view, uh, where you can see raise your hand. And based on that, we can let you in to speak up and ask a question. Slides will be shared with you after the webinar. And uh, at the end of the webinar, we would like to also ask you to complete short uh, survey to evaluate how did you like this webinar? So let me see who we have today here. So we have uh, Isabella. Uh, okay, I'm probably from, assuming from the names from Poland, uh, IT manager Shaban from Palestine. Again, Poland, uh, Valdemar, Tatiana from Kazakhstan. Uh, good morning uh, to Switzerland, uh, Tidiotita. We have also uh, Mastercard Center for Inclusive Growth from London, Rebecca, good morning. We have also Isabella from Poland, etc. So we see, I mean, people are joining. Let's hope, uh, you know, more of you will be present with us today because I think we are really going to have interesting talks and uh, topics to present. At the, at the beginning, let me introduce myself. My, pa my name is Pavel Kapstorfer and I'm Network and Partnership Manager of MFC. And I'm very much enthusiastic about microfinance given my almost 20 years career uh, with one of the major impact lenders. And I will guide you through this webinar in role of moderator. Our main speaker today, will be Goran Lazarevsky from North Macedonia, who has extensive experience in ICT and digital processes, including development projects focusing on digital literacy and inclusion in microfinance. He's also director of the Alliance of Microfinance Organizations in North Macedonia, and loving him direct exposure to the topics he's going to share with us today. So this webinar is organized thanks to the support of Social Inclusive Finance Technical Assistance Program, or so-called SIFTA, and therefore a few words about the program. It's a continuation and enhancement of EU Program for Employment Social Innovation, Technical Assistance, so-called EASY. You probably heard about it in the past or participated in any of the projects from them. And it is managed by European Investment Bank and financed by EU. It provides targeted capacity building, project advisory and market development support to financial intermediaries active in microfinance and or social entrepreneurship spaces. Geographical eligibility of this program is uh, in the countries of European Union and who are the beneficiaries. These are microfinance providers and also social enterprise finance providers. 
The project is implemented by consortium, namely by Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, Microfinance Center, European, Finance, European Microfinance Network, and also Microfinance Rating. If you want to apply for this program, feel free to write an email uh, to SIFTA uh, email address mentioned on this slide. And as we will share the slides with you, you will have it uh, on hand. If you would like to request for services template, they will be sent to the beneficiaries to formally apply to the specific services. Before we start, one more announcement. For those who are keen to learn more about SDGs and way we measure them and report on their progress, you will be most welcome to join us together with Manuela Fritsch from Agents for Impact next week on Thursday. She will provide overview of emerging regulations, standards and initiatives, as well as practices, experiences and tools related to SDG measurement and reporting and we also touch base on benefits and challenges to use the SDGs by microfinance providers. I hope it sounds interesting and uh, you will join us also next week. There will be also a couple of very practical examples and we are inviting also microfinance providers to share their experience. How do they measure? How do they report? And why it is useful and beneficiary and what are the challenges related to SDGs? So let me, let me start the presentation before I give a floor to Goran, because we made a really nice uh, survey together with EMN on 156 uh, MFIs in the, in the region and what I wanted to show just two slides from this survey, which indicates how high is or our capabilities or how low are digital capabilities of clients uh, in, the, in the region. And we found out among the main challenges to digitalization is indeed that 63% of MFIs or microfinance providers responded about low levels of digital know-how by clients, by their clients is one of the main challenges to digitalization. Obviously the digital solutions and high cost attached digital solutions are the second largest challenge, but you also see other challenges which are related to limited staff capacity to use advanced systems, which also means that it requires a lot of training inside of MFIs uh, but also there are some other you know, challenges where you see lack of adequate existing solutions, et cetera. But I think for us, it is important for this webinar, we are going to talk about the digitalization of micro businesses. So therefore we see how important it is to improve, to increase the level of digital skills, uh, digital know-how of the MFI clients. And the second information I want to show you out of the survey MFIs, 41 of them offer support to their clients already in learning how to use the digital solutions. And out of that 41%, 46% they do it either in the branch, 36% online, and further you see some other channels by which they are trying to educate. But you also see that 19% do not support their clients, but we, they are considering to start in future. And 19% still do not offer any digital solution to the clients. So, which is really still very large proportion of MFIs in the sector. Now I would like to give a floor to Goran to continue with his slides and please welcome to our webinar. And uh, we are hoping to hear a lot of good examples you have you know, from the 
practical field and uh, from the environment uh, you operate in North Macedonia. The floor is yours. Thank you, Pavel. I hope you can all hear me well. Um, it's always a challenge with this online um, event, and I do hope we get an opportunity to meet soon in person. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's a big pleasure of mine to be part of this um, webinar today. Uh, at the very beginning, I would like to thank Pavel for the introduction and say that um, even though I come from the um, IT uh, background, ICT background, I'm not an ICT person myself. Uh, I was uh, managing um, uh, the company, so I'm an economist by profession. And um, uh, in that regard, I can relate to the difficulties and challenges that uh, MFIs and clients are facing when they are trying to implement uh, softwares and other solutions to get um, digital in these challenging times. So again, welcome. And um, before I proceed, I would just like to say that the event today is not designed as a training or as something that I would uh, teach you. Uh, you all have much more relevant experience in different areas. And I would very much encourage you and welcome uh, your active participation. Um, and uh, we, the idea of this event is to have a conversation, a debate, or, you know, to exchange because experiences because the practice has shown that the best way to learn is from each other's uh, good practices, but also mistakes uh, we have all made in the past or approaches we have adjusted to. So please do use the chat option to ask questions, uh, suggest, uh, and also share your um, opinions. Now, uh, the key questions we are going to focus on today, and we have a lot to talk to you about, Time is limited, like Powell said, we have a very ambitious agenda, um, is that uh, the microfinances um, is, we should talk about why microfinances need to go digital and how does this process of decision influence microfinance institutions. We all are, have been dealing with this uh, question for a long time. And I, since 2015, since I, uh, am in charge of the Alliance of Microfinance Organizations in my country, uh, have been uh, working on resolving these issues uh, for a while now. So then the key reasons, we will talk about the key reasons for microfinance, micro businesses to consider going digital, but also we need to be very much aware of the key challenges for MFIs uh, in working with non-digital micro-businesses, which actually explains, like Pavel kindly shared earlier, the results of the survey they made. Uh, we'll look at the situation today and why we need to approach it and uh, which mechanisms we can use to overcome the challenges we are facing today. Now, before we proceed, I would like to invite Pavel, Pavel to... Um, to give you the opportunity to share with us some of your experiences. As I said, the idea of this event is not to, um, to only present, but also to open the floor for you uh, and to see what you think and what you have done um, with, um, with the, the ways you got involved in microfinance organizations. So we have a short poll. Pavel will tell you more about it. Please, Pavel. Yes, please, just uh, there are very, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a simple questions. It would be interesting for us to uh, learn about uh, uh, your position, uh, whether you deliberately and in an organized way help your micro businesses digitalize in any area, regardless of what the micro business is dealing with as a, uh, a business sector. So the second option is my organization 
formally and not in an organized way, so spontaneously, pretty much help micro businesses digital us. We want to help, but we still don't. And none of the above. We are simply not yet there as an MFI. Uh, and uh, it would be interesting to see how many of us here today are actually involved because it is, um, we'll talk about why, but also even more important, how we should and, uh, need to get involved in this process. I will click one and submit it, uh, one of the answers and submit it. So please uh, feel free to um, take part in this poll as we uh, continue. Uh, so we can go to the next slide uh, until you uh, provide your answers. Um, Pavel? Yeah, I think the people are still submitting and I, at least I, I see the numbers are growing. So last 10 seconds, let's let's see, you know, if you have anybody else to submit. Of course, yes, of course I'll I, I still, I'll still the, the number is still growing. So yes, few more seconds. Yeah, yeah please, please, please join us just to, you know, let me see really what's the status, you know, with your organizations and uh, Goran can accommodate uh, also his talk accordingly. Okay, let's end up the poll by now and uh, yeah, view the results. You should be able to see the results now. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you all for your results. This is very important for us before we continue. Uh, we have 45% uh, saying my organization deliberately and in an organized way help our micro businesses clients. Um, <clears throat> there is zero of the second option, which is it does help, but not in an organized way, which is actually a good uh, result. Uh, it means that, um, and the third option, we want to help micro businesses digitalize is probably the reason why you're here today. Um, and that's very good to see because we have 35% of uh, participants saying that. And none of the above is 20%, uh, which is also very interesting because um, it is exactly showing the challenges that we need to face. We have 55% of the responses um, today saying that they either don't um, at all, but they want to um, digital to help digitalize the micro businesses, which is a clear indicator of the potential we have for growth. And uh, I think this is very, very useful for us. Um, which is actually uh, allowing us to go further um, to, the, to the next slide and um, start talking about actually um, the, the contents we want to, to, to cover. Um, you see, uh, it's interesting to talk about, I think, the case for MFIs to get involved in the digitalization of micro businesses. And the key questions we want to answer ourselves are, you know, we know MFIs are overworked and understaffed. Yes, it's constantly a challenge for microfinance institutions to find time and resources to expand, to, to keep the business running and expanding is always a, a very big challenge. So the key questions we should provide an answer to is why should MFIs invest time and resources to help micro businesses go digital when they have enough problems themselves, of course, and uh, um, where is the breaking point of this, you know, interest uh, to provide assistance to others? Uh, the benefits, of course, uh, should be decisive about this in um, we know how the current situation is, and these 55% uh, of organizations that don't work with micro businesses probably know best that working with digitalized compared to non digital micro businesses is simply very tough. And we need to be where the, um, the benefits for MFIs, we'll talk about that too. In addition, 
MFIs, by getting involved in this process, can recognize new opportunities to expand their business. We know that, um, and the COVID crisis also showed um, that, you know, the stagnation is not an option. You either grow or die. And uh, we all need to think about how we can grow further as microfinance institutions, create new products and services, and improve existing ones. And this is a very complicated uh, process, which is requiring strong resources as well. But we have to see why it's worth the effort. And then, of course, the key question, a lot of people in our societies are doing this. You all know that there are many programs for support to micro businesses in all of your countries, probably. You know, the state is investing, there are subsidies, different programs for support, education programs and all that. But it is my personal experience that there is no better partner, nobody more relevant to do this than the microfinance institutions. And today we'll talk about why that is so. So um, once we have recognized these key questions about uh, why we should do it, we can move forward to how and uh, we should do it and the ways that MFIs can help the digitalization of micro businesses. Just a small illustrative example, you know, um, the, before we move forward um, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to the first example, providing illustration, um, we can go with the next uh, slide, uh, Powell, if that's okay. Um, and, you know, uh, it is very important that you know, the role of microfinance is today recognized. And we have this um, experience of microfinance organizations providing more than loans. And that's the key uh, word in micro businesses because it's more than access to finance. It's more than money. It's uh, for micro businesses, especially in remote areas, it's a survival issue. Um, because the digital tools can provide the services they otherwise cannot access. So we will now um, go, I think, back to Powell shortly before we continue with example um, uh, one to move to the next slide. Um, now, it's interesting that when we were talking about um, the role of microfinance and importance on how they support micro businesses, we shouldn't forget that micro businesses are, at least in our case, over 97% of the companies of the economy and probably in most of your countries as well. So they represent the uh, survival option uh, for the villages in remote areas, especially. Um, where you can uh, count on factories and foreign investment. Now, we had this experience and we are sometimes, uh, because most of us live in the cities, uh, we forget about how life is outside the, the key capitals and the cities. We had, uh, when we started this project in 2015-16, um, uh, on the microfinance uh, financial inclusion and uh, financial inclusion through digital innovation, which was very important with the uh, USA support. We visited these parts of the country which were not covered uh, with sometimes not even roads um, and uh, basic infrastructure. Um, and the difficulties we found there were very um, eye-opening for us. Uh, because um, we found there a lot of young people living in these villages, living in um, an environment where they had no access, uh, no roads. Um, and during the winter, for example, they would be isolated for two or three months because of the heavy snowfall and the uh, impossibility of the state to act on this and solve this problem. And um, of course, access to finance sounds even, you know, 
I have to say, sometimes like a joke when you talk to these people when they don't have access to basic services. And then there is this simple question. You have people that are working, having a store, for example, or a barber shop. And, you know, the, the law is clear. They need to pay, you know, their dues. They need to do procurements. They need to provide, you know, salaries, apply at the agency for employment and also use subsidies and they say there's nothing we can do about it the only thing we have here is electricity and internet yeah. so like we all know in in remote areas it's not just for remote areas in africa and asia it's happening in uh, here in europe too so it is important to be aware of that and uh, for us as microfinance organizations that's our market to be quite honest, you know, that uh, banks don't really like to, the traditional banks don't really like to get engaged with this population too much because, and we see it here regularly, for example, that from time to time, uh, bank managers uh, decide to take over this market segment, which they think is very interesting, you know, uh, and they do have the capital, they do have people, they, they buy some vehicles, they form a group of salesmen and say they create small loan products and they send them away. But uh, two or three months later, they give up mostly because they don't really know how hard it is to work in microfinance because it's a, a low income uh, business and um, uh, related with high costs. These high costs, and it's hard also, you have to be in the field, you have to go to the mountains, you know, and it's much harder than just sitting in the branch office and wait for people to come and pay their dues. So that's why digital transformation is especially important for MFIs, even more so than for the traditional banking. Um, and um, we as MFIs actually build and educate the banking clients. Once they become bankable, they move forward to the banks. And that's uh, not a bad thing because there is more than enough of potential for us to go over the next years until so many people become bankable. So in the meantime, as I said, uh, there were a lot of young people living in these villages and remittances. A lot of people live from remittances from their relatives living abroad. They don't even have an option how to get the money. You know, they have to travel 20, 30 or even more kilometers to the nearest post office or a bank. And in a very um, mountainous country like we are, that is a problem and in many countries, and they have no access to financial services. So they feel left behind uh, from the state uh, and by the society as a general, and they see no options. So villages, um, well, the last uh, census showed that uh, we as a country with a population of 2 million have over 270 villages with one or less inhabitants, you know, uh, which means with zero. So this is very illustrative about the importance of what we can do as a microfinance institutions through digitalization, because we can actually, I know it sounds ambitious, but we can actually bring life back to these areas if we do what we should right. So what, what impact did we have? Um, we learned, for example, that in order to pay their bills, you know, they still had to, uh, for electricity, for example, they still had to organize somehow to pay their bills they would give cash to one person from the village and he would bring the cash in the bag, you know, to, uh, to travel. But of course, um, that was very risky and costly. And of course, it kind of gave cash for the rest of them. So this was, this is just an illustration how digitalization helps. So uh, our sales, our loan officers uh, went there, talked to these people, presented them and they all have mobile phones because that's the only uh, communication they have uh, with the, if I can say so, civilized world. So uh, they enable them to go digital, become, you know, their clients and um, 
make uh, make a lot of their digital uh -huh. a lot of their financial transactions digital which enable them actually also to use um online the, the services not only from the financial uh, institutions microfinance institutions but also the state you know the tax office you know applications for um, subsidies from the state but we'll talk about it a little later so the impact we have with uh, providing digital financial services is far more than financial services and it's really a life-changing experience for many of our um, of our uh, clients uh, in the field um, before we proceed as uh, we talked earlier with uh, Pavel I would like to um, um, I would uh, like to learn more as I mentioned about your uh, experience what you did uh, maybe you can share with us because we will talk about some experiences we had later on but um, I think it would be very valuable and very useful for us to learn about your practical uh, good and bad experiences it doesn't always have to be of course successful uh, we can all learn from uh, all of your experience so i would like to invite you to use the chat um, field to maybe share with us uh, some experiences you had uh, very shortly briefly and how it impacted um, your client uh, and um, i think that uh, it would be also good to hear what did you learn what are their basic needs you know what needs to be addressed and where can you help most uh, so we can use this um, um, the, this opinion you share in chat to uh, enrich our discussion later on so please feel free to use the chat um, and uh, share uh, some um, thoughts that you have about why uh, what is their key need what is their priority of practices in your um, experience uh, we can maybe move on and we'll get back to the experiences um, later on. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is, um, yes, I will, as soon as we get something in chat, we will be, we will have an opportunity to discuss it with you. Uh, or also, you can also raise your hand. Of course, it doesn't have to be in chat. Uh, just give me a sign that you want to share an experience or um, what businesses need as assistance in your opinion. And we can, of course, open the floor to all of you. I'll be happy to engage in a discussion. Um, in the meantime, uh, we will. Um, uh, proceed to talk about the basics. Um, you see, when we talk about why do micro businesses need to go digital at all and how this decision influences the MFIs, as we saw in the content, you know, the digital, the digital transformation need is simple. It saves money and resources, and it opens unlimited potential for growth. We all know the difference between traditional and digital businesses, uh, but um, usually when we have these discussions, the difference of opinions in about the scope, how far does it go and how much change does it bring? And of course, the impact, uh, how this decision influences MFIs is, of course, we can't stay, you know, uh, isolated from this process. Um, if we do, it will cost us money and resources. And then the impact on us is also very strong. It saves money and resources, and it opens unlimited potential for growth. So as you notice, this is not an error in writing the slide. Uh, these two repeat themselves. So the need for micro businesses to go digital is identical to the impact on MFIs. So this interconnection between the MFIs and the micro businesses doesn't exist in any other uh, area. And that's why there is no 
question that the MFIs should be part of the process. Now it's, you know, it's not easy. We all know that um, uh, keeping it traditional uh, sometimes has short-term advantages in the sense that change is not always, you know, uh, good news, change is not always welcome. And one of the weakest points of micro businesses in general is change management, of course, because change management, even if everything um, is ready, uh, causes, you know, stir and uh, difficulties and every change, even when it's for the better, as is asking for your additional efforts. So we have to be aware that uh, our wishes and the wishes of our uh, clients don't always overlap uh, timely. And uh, we have to be very much aware of uh, the challenges this process brings within, with it. Uh, maybe we can move to the next slide. Oh. Yes, now there are a lot of numbers here. I will not go through all of this. I think we will share the presentation with the participants later on, Pavel, yes. Uh, they will be able to look at the numbers. No, no, but you can go just shortly back um, to the previous slide, I'm sorry. Uh, this um, important pieces of data illustrate um, a few things that are important to consider when we are talking about businesses and their level of digital uh, readiness. For example, the while the transaction accounts number is high in our country versus the European Union, uh, it's relatively close, 85 to 99 percent. We see that, um, and we have a, a much smaller number of credit card owners, but a significantly smaller number of credit card users, and we have an even higher number of mobile phone owners which has to do with uh, the fact that people have to have mobile phone numbers in these passive areas. But also, if you, uh, very important, interesting uh, data is checking a, a transaction account online. You see, all 93% of the people at EU check their account online and only less than half of our mobile phone owners check their account online. So it's interesting that, um, you know, this shows clearly that this is not a technical issue. This is a behavior issue. So this is much harder to change because it's a matter of psychology and not engineering. Now, digital payments show the same trend. We have 65% uh, uh, versus 97% EU. And also, this is also very important for us. Interacted with state is 28 but, uh, versus 62, but downloaded forms from state is 16. So the most important data on this chart for me are, um, you know, checking our account online and downloading forms from state, even though they are available, 16%, even though they do have the infrastructure for that. This is very important because it is pretty much similar in many markets, especially uh, of this uh, size and uh, background. Uh, next slide, please, Paolo. Thank you. <clears throat> now, this is a very, uh, this looks more complicated than it is, but um, you see, this is very important for us to know uh, the, the, the level of digital maturity. As you can see, about 31% of all have low, 35% uh, have medium digital maturity, and 34% of them are completely digital mature already. But if you see the structure by type of companies and our clients are in the first two, mostly Soho and Small, then you see a very different picture and that's important for us. This means that, for example, over 77% are low or medium digital uh, mature, so ready to engage. And that's important for us um, because that's our client space mostly, 
And that's where we need to focus our efforts. Also in the small businesses, over 40% have low or medium digital maturity. And um, that shows that there is a lot for us to do because we need to build this uh, client base. This is our focus, target group, yes. Uh, we can now move to the next slide, Paul. Well, thank you. Now, just we don't want to bother you too much with charts. Um, just a few indicative uh, informations about um, the level of digital readiness, the situation. You see, uh, device-wise, uh, by so internet access by device type, the data is not very different um, of the EU versus our country. And I think that it is important to stress here that Again, this brings us back to the previous conclusion that the problem is very often not in the technical availability or accessibility. The problem is usually in the behavior of people, uh, behavior of people, uh, clients, and uh, their thoughts and reserves about digitalization. Next slide. <sighs> So, um, of course, the basic uh, data for us, now that we came to the conclusion that the key issue, uh, not the only one, but the key issue are the people, of course, um, then we need to analyze the people. You know, how ready are they and how far are we ready to engage to increase that? Uh, digital readiness, digital skills. And when we see the countries from our region and also the European Union, we see a very different level of digital skills. Uh, these are only the people with basic or above digital skills per country. So education is definitely, as this picture shows, is definitely one of the priorities, of course, for, um, for what we have to do. Uh, you know, uh, this also shows that we have to be very careful with um, when we make decisions to invest. I had this, um, you know, opportunity at the last um, MFC conference in Istanbul before COVID in 2019 um, to be part of the panel on digital transformation. Uh, and the panel was called, you know, uh, Navigating the Digital Jungle. And it was a very good name for this panel. We also had a lot of experiences there to share. But I tried to illustrate, and I think it's good to, to mention it again, you know, uh, the transformation of NFIs and the stakeholders. Uh, as I said then, you know, the financial institutions can invest and buy the digital equipment and softwares um, and get ready for the digital transformation immediately. However, uh, that would illustrate it in the jungle. That would mean that we would, for example, buy a helicopter and fly over the jungle and get to the other end. The problem is that when we get to the other end, we'll be pretty alone because the other stakeholders do not have access to a helicopter. You know, to go through the jungle, they would have to walk. And there I mean the regulators, the clients, but also our staff. So it's not a solution, it's not an engineering solution, that is an important part, but we should always focus on the people because like any change of behavior, you know, going digital is, as I said, mostly a behavioral change and we should never forget that. At this moment, the basic digital skills per country pose a big challenge for all of us, but also a big opportunity if we recognize it and if we are ready to deal with it. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, the key challenges, of course, as I mentioned in the introduction, there are key, uh, very important challenges of working with non-digital micro businesses. We have been doing it for many years, it's not new. Uh, for us, but the fact that it's not new doesn't mean that it's good and that uh, changes would not be welcome. As we all know, traditional businesses bring high operational costs for MFIs. 
we all need, know that we need to go there mostly in agricultural uh, uh, environments and we need to they like us to visit them in person and this will not change uh, radically so this is a process that will take time we should and we should not we should be realistic and we will, should not expect everyone to turn to digital communication immediately so we should be very creative in addressing this problem because with the rising energy prices, you know, it gets more and more expensive to organize these field visits for our loan officers. On the other hand, traditional businesses, so non-digital businesses, are often not aware of advantages of digitization and the potential it brings for their businesses. We all know that many of them are um, many of our food pro producers are dealing with big product uh, problems, even though their products are more expensive on the market than ever. That's wh uh, why that is so. It's because they are not modernizing their processes and uh, they are not um, using even some uh, uh, subsidies and other sources of uh, funding for their business. Also, micro businesses, as we mentioned earlier, are characterized by um, limited human resources. It's usually one or two or up to five people mostly. And they are all engaged in the core process of the company uh, and not really um, having the time to be engaged in education. Um, and of course, be managing business processes and finances, especially cash flow planning. This is all a big challenge for them. And they don't um, understand sometimes how much time they're spending more than they would if they would go digital. Also, by not using digital channels, they don't follow new developments and products. Cross sales for us, for MFIs are much harder because the new products we have need to be presented in the field. We need to go to them personally. So this is uh, uh, a costly operation. It's expensive in human power, but also in energy cost. They need more advice, again, in person, because they rely on us. We all know that MFIs are more than just finance providers. Know, they are their friends and uh, advisors for the businesses. But also on the MFI side, processing loan requests is often more costly. Uh, you know, if you have to go visit them once, twice, and then bring them to the notary office uh, to um, take care of documents, sometimes it's more costly than the income the MFIs make in these loans because. Um, for example, in our case in North Macedonia, the interest rate is legally capped. You know, we have an 8% interest uh, cap uh, on the, and, and that is strongly limiting our ability, you know, to include real costs in the price of loans. So these are all challenges making it harder for us to work with traditional businesses at the time. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we can go to um, next slide. Now I would like to give the floor to Powell. I think this is a good place when we talk about challenges to see how you are looking at this issue and what your thoughts are. The floor thank is yours. Yeah, thank you, Goran. Uh, let me introduce a, a small but really nice project uh, we made this year with Mastercard uh, Center for Inclusive Growth and uh, uh, we were actually thinking of a project which would help uh, with very simple tools to micro enterprises and MFIs as well uh, to introduce and find out uh, about uh, the level of digitalization of businesses, uh, digitalization of the clients of MFIs. And uh, we, we uh, prepared a little quiz uh, in English, but also in Russian, because there were actually eight MFIs, uh, also uh, including uh, Central Asia, participating in this project. 
And we also prepare a little uh, navigator or prototype of navigator in English, set of digital tools which could help the clients to digitalize their business. So we had this quiz, how digitalizes your business, uh, which was really uh, also in mobile friendly interface. So it was up to them uh, to reply uh, in, in different environment. Uh, and it was adjusted to local languages, depending on MFI's uh, country origin. And the whole quiz uh, was set of uh, nine questions. And I will show you results of two questions just uh, to give you an idea. And uh, at the end of the quiz, the client received the assessment uh, of their level of digitalization, of the level of business digitalization, and also receive the links to the learning resources uh, where they could find out with little instruction manuals how, uh, how to, uh, let's say, uh, use uh, Facebook or, uh, or Instagram uh, for their sales or how to bring themselves uh, to the Google Maps, uh, etc. So here I'm showing you, you know, uh, sort of uh, yeah, picture with different uh, instruction manuals, uh, which were helping the clients uh, to find out uh, uh, how basically they can uh, they can uh, put themselves, how they can locate themselves into Google Maps, how to show the products and services on Instagram, how to keep uh, the clients informed via Facebook. So how to create their own website, uh, also how to start selling their products online. So there were some uh, little uh, instruction manuals or with different uh, websites uh, where they could uh, actually start to sell their products. But, and also uh, offer uh, you know, online payments in case uh, the local legislation would allow them. So here, here, this was the overall results of the uh, eight MFI clients, uh, which was uh, up to thousand clients basically. So it's it's not a representative sample, but still it shows uh, you know uh, uh, there were some good MFIs uh, participating on this. Uh, I'm well advanced one, uh, so uh, it showed uh, also uh, what's the level of business digitalization of their clients. So as you see, and that's why we also think this topic is really important and we have gone on to present this, uh, is that still 23% of their clients, uh, uh, based on their replies, uh, the quiz concluded that they are at the beginning of their digital journey. Uh, and uh, also, you know, very large proportion of the client uh, is already engaged, but has still potential to improve it. And only 23% were really well off uh, and, uh, and were using the digital tools. And another, another example uh, uh, to show how advanced they are in using uh, of different digital solutions for their businesses, it also shows that uh, there is a progress uh, with, with different solutions the client use, but you see the figures are still in the range of 20 to 40%. So there is uh, still a, a, a large opportunity for them to, uh, to basically uh, penetrate further these different uh, digital tools, digital solutions, and to help their businesses. So you see, uh, like, you know, with company website, 23%, uh, uh, obviously for the very small micro entrepreneurs, it's not necessity, but still, uh, you know, uh, the number is, uh, is quite uh, low, uh, while the others, you know, Facebook, Instagram, 39, 42, uh, these are uh, quite, uh, quite good figures, but still, you know, potential, potential there, while, which is still important, and as it had been confirmed by overall results, uh, none of above digital solution has been used. 23%, which is still, uh, you know, one fifth of all uh, clients of these MFIs. And, and there is a good potential uh, to, to improve that. So in case uh, you would like to, to engage in this uh, very simple, uh, but I think very effective uh, tool uh, project, uh, we, you can always contact MFC and, uh, and uh, we will see how we could, we could help you. 
Thank you very much. Goran, yeah, back to you. Uh, these um, findings um, uh, of the quiz Pavel just presented are very good um, illustration and they overlap with exactly what uh, we have been um, seeing over the years. Um, and, you know, being with the clients every day and doing a lot of surveys constantly and MFC has been very um, assist, uh, well, of great assistance to us in the process is also confirming the importance of, uh, you know, joint efforts. We'll talk about that uh, just uh, very shortly. Um, now, now that we see the numbers, and when we saw the numbers, the numbers are not very different in different countries, especially in the region, uh, with the newest trends, for example, of 22 to 40% of businesses paying online in one year, which is a good trend, um, and seven from seven uh, to twenty three percent of micro businesses offering online payment in one year, and then from eleven percent to twenty eight percent of micro businesses offering home delivery. And I have to say, the COVID crisis was a big uh, helper in this process. Of course, it made us uh, think about how you know uh, uh, we can be creative as businesses, um, but looking at these numbers and then followed by what we talked about already, low levels of digital skills and low levels of performed digital payments, low use of internet in communication with state institutions, but in general also with the wider public, the high level of internet coverage as a potential and the high level of use of mobile phones with internet it becomes very clear to the microfinance institutions that we need to get engaged. There is no more room to wait for somebody else to step in. Nobody else will. And all these processes that were happening over the years had uh, with, of course, startup environment, social enterprises, the different programs that were offered, they, were, they all had uh, some success uh, in some countries more than in some countries less. But the fact is that the micro business environment for digital transformation isn't changing with the pace that we would like to see. There are still too many traditional businesses and the level of readiness is still not where we want it to be. So we need to get engaged. We can move to the next slide, please. Uh, now that we decided, uh, we we saw that simply, um, yeah, uh, as, as we, uh, when we repeat the findings we talked about earlier, like recognizing the benefits for MFIs and working with digital as compared to non-digital, um, and then recognizing new opportunities to expand our business and create new products and services, which was mentioned before, it became clear that we need to engaged but as i said in the previous slide but the problem is how and in to what extent so what have we done in our country to help micro businesses go digital is what we are talking about also today the answer was pretty simple and straightforward we need to focus on the weak points and bottlenecks and how do we learn which they are can we move to the next slide? Please? So, what did we do to help businesses digitalize? Of course, we all know we have very limited resources. Um, uh, in our country, we have three uh, retail microfinance institutions that's Savings House Mojnosti, Savings House Fulm, and the Microcredit Foundation Horizonte. Um, and uh, the market is limited uh, um, uh, and uh, they are all struggling of course with their uh, business development constantly they are all part of this challenging e uh, ecosystem but what we decided to do with the alliance we sat down identified the challenges and we recognized that if we want to succeed to make a long-term change and impact we need to go uh, systematically and design a comprehensive set of activities to address the regulators, the population, the businesses, and the MFI staff if we want to change from the old system 
to a new one. Because focusing on each of these groups without focusing on the others means, as I uh, said earlier with the jungle, that one of these will stay in the jungle while we are at the other end, and that's not good. We need all these four groups to be ready when we pass the jungle and get to the other side. So what do we do? What, do we, uh, what did we do? And what are we continuing to do? Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, why are the regulators important? Um, because, and, and why is it important that we engage with them? Micro businesses are generally strongly supported by the regulators in the sense of programs, as I mentioned earlier, for support. But they are too frequently seen as a vulnerable group and not so much as a market potential. So um, they are usually less um, presented uh, with the regulators. Uh, the regulators usually uh, don't have many representatives of the micro businesses when the regulatory decisions are made. And they usually talk about medium or big companies when they talk about uh, legislation forgetting about the actual problems of micro businesses. So our Microfinance Alliance joined, became member of the National Coordinating Council of Regulatory Agencies of Financial Literacy, led by the central bank. Why was this important? Because we'll, when we joined this uh, Coordinating Council, we learned that their financial literacy activities were focusing mostly on the academic environment, big banks, businesses, but they had a very limited scope because they were not going out there and talking to our clients, which is 90% of the population. So we decided that we need to change this and bring a stronger focus. We um, are still members of this coordinating council. We were very active and our contribution was very eye-opening and um, we were able to shift the focus of the regulators towards the problems of, problems of micro businesses. Now, why, uh, what can the regulators do to support this process and create favorable legislation for businesses and their digitalization? There are very concrete challenges. For example, now we can uh, supply, we can get applications for a loan um, and process them electronically. But before we sign the loan, we still need to go to the notary public, you know, to uh, take care of all the documents, um, which makes it actually, which makes the process impossible to fully digitize, but um, uh, because of the regulation. That's one of the things we are working on now is digital identity uh, or EID, which is very important and also the question of digital signature. I know it's a challenge in many countries. Be, until we solve these issues with the regulators and also enabling uh, microfinance institutions to become payment operators and agents, which we were successful with in our country finally, uh, starting January 1, we will have our microfinance institutions um, in the law uh, as payment agents, which is a very big uh, step forward for their um, competitiveness and sustainability and access to their clients. So regular, uh, including the regulators is very important. Um, and uh, nobody can represent the interests of the micro business community better than we can because we have access and we have the knowledge to do so and we have the experience. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this, of course, uh, also takes uh, resources, but um, um, after the regulators, we focused, of course, on the financial literacy, capacity building of the wider population of our clients. You saw the numbers, financial and digital literacy uh, is limited. Um, and um, we were able to, with a joint effort through the uh, Microfinance Alliance and through serious, serious engagement of our members to organize 30 
two-day financial and digital literacy trainings for different target groups, students, micro-entrepreneurs, farmers, and startups, and subgroups such as women entrepreneurs, Roma, and um, uh, other groups, which we identified. And we were able to create a curricula which is customized for the five different target groups. So we didn't just go to everybody and say the same thing. We went to their um, cities and villages um, and the microfinance institutions, members of our alliance actually uh, actively helped uh, to design the curricula, the training topics in the field of digital finance, which is also very important. But also the topics were uh, divided in two components, personal and business digital finance with practical exercises with a focus on e and M banking services uh, provided by uh, each of our members. So each of these trainings was also a presentation of their solutions and why they uh, and how they can help micro businesses improve their performance. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Now, um, this one activity with the 30 trainings that we had um, was followed also in the past years with an additional set of 11 trainings in digital financial literacy uh, with 1,163 participants from 421 micro businesses, craftsmen and women, Roma, agriculture economists and business, social businesses and small and micro businesses in all regions of the country. Uh, just one note, uh, this number 1,163 includes the participants from the previous 30 trainings. So in 41 trainings, we were able to cover 1,163 participants, many of them in the agricultural economy. And uh, as I said, also for this set of trainings, our member MFIs developed the curricula and presented their digital solutions. So we had the same approach. Um, and on the right side, you can see some of these solutions and some of these trainings that we had. As you can well notice, many of these uh, participants of our trainings are, um, are, are people who have some experience behind them already. We were aiming for also micro businesses who already um, have been engaged for some time. So no, not always startups and students and beginners, but they were also included. And this is always a challenge I have to say, because many of them, um, for example, the vulnerable groups, uh, we had uh, women coming from um, jeopardized uh, areas and uh, victims of uh, bio domestic violence sometimes. Um, and it was always also very important to turn them into our uh, partners uh, to talk to the regulators because we are still facing and one of the biggest challenges for microfinance institutions in our country is for example the access to finance for women because they very often do not have property of their name the property is still very frequently on the name of uh, the husband or the father and um, they have limited access to finance. But also it's interesting that we, for example, Horizonte has a special credit line only for women and 98% of the loan users are women entrepreneurs, actually, uh, Roma, which is um, uh, very, very successful. And they have shown to be very, very disciplined and successful in their repayments. Um, we can move forward. Now, uh, it, whenever you know, we all know there are a lot of trainings going on, different donors. I mean, especially in our country, we can't even you know count the many events that we have. But measuring the impact of conducted trainings is always a question, uh, a challenge. So what we did was we prepared questionnaires, and that's very important to check the level of knowledge of each of these identified target groups, and that's well, that's not easy. I can. Uh, always uh, to get uh, reasonable results. Um, so these questionnaires were filled out by participants. At the beginning, it was like a small test, you know, of knowledge. 
at the beginning and at the end of trainings, covering some of the materials just to, sh to see how much we were able to you know, improve that knowledge. And for these 30 trainings for digital financial knowledge, the percentage of correct answers was increased by 46%. Um, up to 83%. So before they started, uh, the total number was some 37% with correct answers uh, to the very, 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 very basic questions that we asked. And then um, at the end of the training, this had risen to 83, which is 84 almost, which is a very good result uh, for uh, two day sessions. Uh, they were mostly two day events. Uh, Next slide, please. Uh, now, you know, bringing people to training is um, adults. Uh, I just uh, heard about the survey from last week saying that in our country, only 9% of the adults are engaged in education, in adult education. In Serbia, the number was 23, and in the European Union, it was like 70 or something. So, it is a big challenge, and you all know this better than I do, to get people to these trainings. You know, we really need to be creative and we need to show them why, uh, how this will positively impact them and what their benefit will be from this um, participation. What we are showing them is focusing on our solutions, on our services. Uh, one of these solutions is, of course, from Savings House Možnosti. We can see here um, what they are offering, and it's very important to present it in a very understandable and simple way, you know, that they will have insight into the payments and uh, checking the balance of the loan. They won't have to come to the office five, six times to check that um, uh, the, the, the saldo of their loan. And we can move forward. The e-banking and m-banking. Uh, and now we'll have uh, we have here the savings house full, and our dear colleague um, Maria, who will uh, uh, now uh, shortly share their experiences um, uh, on few important questions. First, why they decided to support micro businesses to help them go digital, and how it worked in the practice. We have a short video um, by Maria. I hope it will work. If it doesn't, we'll have to engage her personally. Can we turn up the volume if possible? Um, yes, I don't think we can hear her well. Yeah, um, maybe uh, when we share the presentation, you'll be able to hear, the, uh, you will be able to open the video. Uh, should we maybe move forward uh, in the interest of time? And so when you get the presentation, we will, uh, you will be able to listen to what Mary had to say. It's, it's very inspiring and also based on a lot of years Yes, I'm sorry, Maria, for the technical glitch, um, but the people will get uh, more details. What she was saying is that they recognized, uh, uh, as a credit union, they recognized the challenges and they were addressing them, focusing, uh, like we did, all of us, were on financial literacy. But it is also good to see that um, and these examples are of course not something that you haven't heard about, but it's always good to remember, you know, why we are doing what we are doing and how it's impacting improving people's life. You see, we had this um, family farm in Mustafa, you know, needed a uh, loan. Um, and to be honest, sometimes, you know, um, 
they are not even aware of uh, you know the long of, of the advantages that long will bring and so that's why it's important to be there on the field but despite of the growing prices of food and the strong demand we all know what's been happening this year with these global challenges and food prices um, their business was supposed to strive of course now it would have been a good year for them but the business continued to fail every day and then the colleagues from the microfinance institution Horizonte, the loan officer uh, showed up uh, at their home and um, because they wouldn't come, of course, to the branch office. There was simply no time for that um, or money. Uh, and presented them. Uh, her name was, uh, as you can see it on the right hand of the screen, uh, Danche Masterska, that's uh, the lady in charge of agro loans for that region. What they did was they went there several times. They had several visits talking to the owners and slowly but surely presented them with the opportunities they have to grow their business by using digital and save money and time of course this is a family farm they didn't have anybody you know um, extra to devote to this so um, they presented them um, with options to save money and time we can now go to the next slide um, and what they did was you see <clears throat> They told them about their products. This is Danche in actual life on the right side. And uh, that previously was her avatar, which is actually what uh, Horizon is now using as a digital identity of uh, the loan officer, where they can directly communicate with her. And uh, there is a number of services they can um, uh, use with indirect communication with her online. Um, so she becomes practically uh, online, daily present and available to them for uh, questions, um, different uh, uh, applications they can do, loans, but also when they have difficulties in deciding about interest rates, loans, uh, whether to take any uh, cash flow analysis, when to make business plans for applications for subsidies and all that. So we can hear, see it here. The loan officer showed them how to use ICT financial services, how to follow the online platforms to apply for subsidies, employment registration, tax declarations, EU EPAD programs, which are now very interesting in our country, but also how to follow market prices and make orders from suppliers. You know, all of these things were not happening before, and uh, their market presence was very limited. Now, this farm, without going into too many details, we are available for you, of course, anytime um, to share more interesting data. But the farm is completely transformed. And that means that they really, the, the second generation actually took over, you know, because with the digital, the, with the introduction of digital tools, they are now monitoring the climate situation, you know, they can plan their activities in the field depending on the weather which they, they didn't so they used to have big damages in heavy rain or other um, um, uh, weather issues so now they've we've opened their eyes initially you know basically about these many many options that, that can improve and now this family farm is very very successful uh, <clears throat> in Mustafa, you know, and is a very good example of how MFIs can, it, this would never have happened if we didn't show up there, to be quite honest, nobody was talking to them. Now we can go to the next um, slide. <clears throat> yeah, these are some of the applications and options Microcreate uh, micro Foundation Horizon is offering. Uh, and uh, we can go to the next slide. You see, many of these are, are focusing on agriculture because of the remote areas, of course, they work with. But also, Mojnosti has this interesting example of um, digital design and uh, web design and production company they supported in Veles. It's a city 50 kilometers from Skopje, small town. Uh, it's called Ekarta MK. And uh, they are, um, uh, they, what they did was this owner of this company, he was digitally very literate, of course, uh, he, his own business is uh, based on web, 
but he had very little idea how to connect this with financial services and how he can optimize his sales through the introduction of digital sales and e-commerce channels. He could just, just couldn't make the connection. So what they did was they presented him different options of digital services they can provide, helping them learn about experiences of other clients. That is also very important with startups because they are new and uh, they, they shouldn't learn from their own mistakes sometimes. And then the introducing of the expansion models for e-commerce. And now on the right hand side of the website, you can see that they have in the meantime developed to be one of the uh, uh, to, to be a company with many 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 services and uh, they uh, acknowledge that their owner frequently goes also in the public saying that none of it uh, would have been possible without the strong engagement of the Morgan Street team and uh, the financing digital channels they produced for them and developed those. We can move to the next slide. Oh, time is going by. And also uh, one very important thing is we need to not, not forget to educate our staff because they are a very important part of the process. They need to be credible. When they go and talk to the clients, they need to know what they're talking about, but also they need to understand micro businesses and be skilled in business processes, decision-making and risks, if we want them to be an advisor, friend and a partner, and that's our key market advantage towards the banks and others. But, and we did organize a lot of trainings, but education of hundreds of staff members is expensive and our revenues in the MFI business, as you all know, are limited. So we took a different approach, which worked very well in our country. We join our forces, we can see it on the next slide. To optimize spending, here you see our colleagues from different MFIs on joint events, educational events where they learn from each other. We also had 21 events in 11 cities, trainings, conferences, webinars, and specialized seminars for over 500 MFI professionals. Some of them obviously overlapping on several different events, but the topics were always in the context of micro and small businesses and the impact of the long-term success of the MFIs with um, micro business clients and digital transformation. This made, this turned, you know, our staff members into believers. And then if you believe something, it's much easier to, of course, uh, present the idea uh, to somebody else. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Next slide, please. So, the conclusion. What did we learn from our experiences in helping micro businesses digitize over the years? Now, there is no question anymore. Um, the MFIs can and should do a lot to help their micro businesses clients digitalize. Definitely, we need to um, invest resources in this process. We have a direct and strong interest and we have a lot to benefit from because on the long term, digitalization has no alternative. Micro businesses welcome this assistance, but they often don't have the extra time and resources to invest in formal or informal education and development of business strategies. This opened the door to us because we can go there and we can take over about the way they think. And to be successful, the approach needs to be comprehensive and include all stakeholders. That's especially important, the regulators, the population, the micro businesses, and the MFI staff. Only with such a comprehensive approach can we expect long-term results. But also, as you know, the digital world is changing. Usually, previously it was changing every three, five years. Now it's three, five months that we get new applications and new solutions for different options. Uh, and that's why we constantly ourselves also have to adjust to these changes and carefully customize our solutions and offers and approaches to the market conditions, which, as I said earlier, are constantly changing. As a final conclusion from today, I would say that there is no universal solution, but many of our activities can surely be helpful uh, to you as well. We would be glad to help any way we can 
just of course contact me and the MFC and uh, Alliance of Microfinance Organization. We'll be glad to organize something together and uh, share resources to optimize the impact of um, what we do. I hope um, you will be able when you get this uh, presentation and I hope this uh, webinar today will serve as the first of many debates we will have as an initiation to talk about because the MFC experience has shown to us and the regional approach we had with our friends and colleagues from the region and wider that we can learn a lot from books, but we can learn best from each other. So please feel free to contact me and Paolo and the rest of the team to which I also want to thank for this opportunity today. Thank you very much. I give the floor back to Pavel. Thank you. Thank you, Goran, very much uh, for this uh, nice uh, uh, and thorough uh, presentation uh, with showing, uh, you know, a, a status of uh, digitalization of micro businesses and uh, uh, what it takes to bring uh, digital solution closer uh, to the clients, to the micro clients. Uh, and I think uh, with all the information we show you, we can confirm there is still a, quite a gap yeah, in digitalization of micro businesses. And, uh, and uh, there is already good number of, uh, of good examples, which could be you know, uh, taken over and uh, adopted uh, to, to different, in different countries in, with different MFIs. And uh, we are also trying as MFC, you know, to help uh, the MFIs with that. So feel free to, to approach us. And uh, we hope that, uh, yeah, in future, we will continue to bring you uh, these up-to-date topics, uh, information and good examples. I think also Goran shared a number of nice examples to show, uh, you know, how uh, MFIs uh, can approach and what they can offer in terms of products and services. So thanks a lot, Gorand. And uh, now I would like to open the floor uh, for uh, questions. Uh, we will try uh, or, or comments or... or comments, or we would actually uh, like very much uh, what Gorand already mentioned. If uh, if you can come up and you know uh, we can unmute yourself. Uh, and uh, you know we can uh, we can share with everybody what did you do? I mean, if you did anything, uh, what helped your organization uh, to bring the digital solutions and improve the situation with digitalization of your micro clients businesses, uh, please share it with us. We will be very happy uh, to share it with uh, the, with the audience we have today. So feel free to, to write in chat any question or uh, raise your hand, uh, you know, on the dashboard. You have these uh, icon reactions where you can raise your hand. Maybe in the meantime, in the meantime, maybe I can add just shortly a small comment. Uh, the What I may fail to mention is it's important um, consumer protection is usually one of the issues that we were talking about and helping with the regulators. It's a problem in digital world and they're not, the legislation is not following the developments always accordingly. So it is time to, um, it is an opportunity for MFIs to engage and use the national alliances, but also the MFC, you know, um, as, as um, an organization to help. Yeah, we have several, Raised hands, Pavel. All right, so uh, let me go just uh, by order. I see on my screen, uh, uh, I will try to invite uh, Vlad Mihut. So hi everybody, my name is Vlad. I'm from Romcom in Romania. Uh, thank you for the presentation. My question uh, has to do a little bit with the connection between digital solution and uh, solutions and promotion overall of our services towards small businesses. And I'm wondering whether you have 
examples of uh, of successful use of, uh, uh, of digital promotion or other digital solutions uh, towards small businesses. We've tried several things from you know, paid ads to, to other systems and it was with low to moderate success. So we feel that we haven't cracked that code yet. I'm not sure whether it's because of us or of because of low digitalization of our target clients, but maybe somebody has experienced uh, more success and uh, I, I'd, I'd be glad to learn from your experience. Thank you. Yes, uh, question. thank you, Vlad. Um, it's uh, um, the promotion uh, channels. We were talking about this. Goran? Uh, the level, as you said rightfully, the level of digital readiness is, of course, limited in our uh, countries. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Yes, Yes. now we can hear you. I'm um, sorry. Um, it, is, it is a big challenge because, of course, the good thing about that is that once you create the database um, uh, of people, you have a new medium. You know, media to, to, to promote your products. However, the results, and I, I guess similar in your case too, the number of people that went digital, became digitized, is still not satisfactory. You know, our efforts are still ongoing uh, because of these challenges that we were all facing. You know, COVID did help, but other you know, uh, things didn't. Um, the regulatory environment was not very good. And so the number of people we can reach online is still limited. You are right about that. And uh, on, the, on the other hand, it, uh, interesting two uh, developments here. One was the fact that there is, there is very large reserve in the public uh, towards security issues, you know, a lot of things about um, uh, digital and, you know, 5G and digital products and all that. There is a lot of misinformation going on, but also, that's why I mentioned customer protection. We have, for example, our inspections saying that, you know, talking to people and saying, uh, if you want to be protected, go to the office and get a signed form you know, on paper. So they are practically chasing our, 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 our uh, uh, destroying our digital efforts to digitalize people because they say we cannot guarantee your customer protection online. You know, that's why it's important to change the regulatory perspective. So promoting uh, the products online uh, has other challenges. And of course, one of the things we noticed, there was this interesting, uh, um, uh, still we have to face the fact that most of our clients are uh, visiting us in physical presence and uh, physical uh, promotion is still the most uh, dominating uh, channel for promotion. It will not change radically quickly uh, we even, I, I, I witnessed myself, a lady in the bank who said, you know, um, uh, a lady took a leaflet saying e-banking, you know, what is this? And then she said, well, forget about it. You come to me. You know, this is a good opportunity to talk. So our efforts to digitize depend on many factors and promoting our digital services is and will stay a challenge, to be honest. Yeah, but Maybe, maybe to add to your comments, and thank you for the reply. Um, we see microfinance as being a an activity very much based on a personal face-to-face -face interaction. So, in that respect, should we even pursue uh, a digital uh, promotion at all? Towards maybe only for lead generation towards our clients, given the fact that again, uh, the face-to-face, -face, the person-to-person -person interaction is is the the key. Uh, interaction in, in, in our business. Uh, yes, if I may, uh, and you, you are much more experienced and relevant than me, but in my personal opinion, this balance will slowly, but very slowly shift, you know, towards digital. Uh, the, the, our market will remain 
<coughs> sorry, even the digital solutions we implement, uh, which they use because they don't have other access, like they have in Kenya, for example, you know, for large populations to reach them where there is no other alternative, that doesn't change the understanding of people. They do use it only as much as necessary. But of course, we don't have another option but to continue to pursue it. You know, it doesn't mean that uh, traditional uh, should be the only one, but we should only be aware that the process will take time. You know, and uh, one of the biggest mistakes are, uh, that are being made sometimes is the uh, unrealistic expectation, you know, that somehow it will take three or five years and then, you know, because for us it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense for everybody, you know, and uh, we need to be, that's why I mentioned Sarata, we need to be very much aware of our client base and not forget about their, um, uh, their preferences, you know, and their concerns. We saw, for example, in our surveys about digital readiness that many of them just don't want to be, you know, um, to take care of security, you know, and you know, and of passwords and change the password. And this survey showed that they would be ready to change the password each two weeks for Facebook, for example, but not for their business account. It's too hard, you know. But for social media, it would they would. So. These are, that's why I think you are very much right about that. We should always remember that this is not, you know, digitalization is at least the engineering part. The digitalization is a behavioral change part. So it has to do mostly with psychology. And we need to be very aware of that all the time and re-examine our approach and see how the target group, how the people are evolving and adjust our approach. So there is, I don't think there is a single decision we can do now for the next three years or five years or a year. Uh, but you as managers of MFIs, and that's a heavy task, have to do it daily, you know, think about how we can approach. Them. Um, but still, you are right. Uh, they, it is hard and it won't get easier anytime soon. But it doesn't mean we can allow ourselves to give up, of course. We need to stay focused. It's a challenge. It, it, I know it is, and it's frustrating very often, I have to say, <laughs> you know, um, when you see. But we also have to know that a lot of our clients don't, you know, sometimes we've seen that many of them lack financial literacy, but some of them, you know, sometimes they are facing basic literacy issues, you know, because they are very remote um, uh, in areas and but that's our client base whether we you know um, can change it or not so it's a process so it's a long-term process definitely thank you Ron. all right thank you Ed. thank you goran uh, and now i would like to give a floor to oktai from finca please uh, yes hello colleagues Glad to see you all. Thank you for this presentation. Actually, a few days ago, we had this kind of internal webinar about talking about digital activities. And in Azerbaijan, we are very quite active. And I would like to also, my question was about more about people habits, because even we push digital marketing, people like visiting branches. I mean, they like speaking with coming and calling back. This is a long process again, Goran, yes that we have to work with. There is a uh, new customers and there is a old customers. So I think with new customers, we have a good trend increasing digital, especially in young people, with female, as you mentioned, are more active. And um, yes, we have, a, in Azerbaijan, we have a trend of growing uh, digital part of our products. But again, this is behavior changing is very important and will be long lasting. And uh, yes, and talking about this breaking code, I would suggest break these audiences. I mean, when we treat the audience as it is a whole, then we should treat different or big cities with one strategy, small town with other strategies, because there is a different audiences in each region, in each, so they have different behavior. So our digital marketing activities should consider all these 
challenges and be more well targeted. And I think through this, we will be able to succeed more. And this is a long process. I mean, microfinance is more rural oriented people. And this is really a, a conservative uh, uh, behavior that we have to try to change. Uh, thank you. And then my, my question was about changing behavior. And you already answered it with that. Um, yeah, it's a long process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is very true. And I am very happy that we focus at the, at the end on what I think is most important, and that's behavior, you know, science, if you want, and how do we do that. Um, we see that, for example, with this farm, you know, things started to evolve. One, uh, our efforts made it possible for the second generation to take over, you know, and it's also a generational shift, of course, because micro businesses are very often family businesses and, uh, you know, the generation of my age and older is often dominant, which is not good for the digital processes. Uh, and we are, you know, uh, working on, um, on, on, on giving an opportunity to the second or third generation even, who don't even think about uh, non-digital options in their life. Uh, but we have to be, as I said, very careful. We had this experience with ProCredit, for example, a bank here. Uh, at one point, they decided to go fully digital in all their branches. You know, they closed all counters. And the only way you could enter, you know, an office, a branch office was with a card. And it, it hit back very strongly. You know, they practically work only with legal entities now and the physical persons have have simply uh, were not ready for such a change you know and that's why um, these decisions need only uh, need not only to be carefully designed but also customized for each market different you know this this uh, there are very different even in similar geographical markets very very different approaches and as we all often say to our regulators, you need, you know, behavioral specialists and psychologists to design policies, you know, uh, engineers too, but it's not an only an engineering issue. And that's why I'm glad to see, for example, in the companies we work with that business analysts are the key people, actually, you know, business process analysts, uh, rather than the programmers themselves, you know, because the programmers are producers of solutions, but the designers of solutions are the business process analysts. That's the same in this regard. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Very true. <clears throat> Uh, thank you. Thank you, Abtai, for sharing your experience from your country, from your market, and also your suggestions of breaking the market. So it's it's interesting one. And I think, uh, yeah, uh, people will take that into account. Uh, do we have anybody else who would like to ask uh, on, on camera or just with unmuting? Or I don't see anybody uh, uh, putting any question into chat. If we don't have any other questions, uh, our time is almost up, but uh, still I would like to thank you very much, all of you. And before before uh, we say goodbye to everybody, uh, I would like to ask my colleague Joanna if, uh, uh, given that uh, this webinar is supported by SIFTA program, we also uh, need your assistance with the evaluation of the webinar. And we would appreciate very much if you devote this one minute uh, to evaluate this webinar and Joanna, please, uh, can you share the evaluation? Yes, I think Joanna wrote it on the browser uh, for everyone to see on their browser. So they should be able to complete. Yes, it will be available in the browser at the end of the meeting. Yes, for each one individually. All right. So I will I will stop uh, now uh, sharing uh, the presentation. Uh, before Pavel closes the event, please allow me to thank you all, and uh, our club contacts will be shared, and we'll be happy to continue the communication and help any way we can. Thank you again for your kind attention.
Okay, thank you very much, Goran, once again, and thank you all the participants. And uh, if you have any suggestions uh, or you know proposals uh, for uh, for our assistance or cooperation, please feel free to contact us. Uh, and uh, we are looking forward to have you on the next events uh, already next week uh, on Thursday. We have a uh, last webinar of this year, so we will be happy to see you around and uh, join our session. Thank you very much.